In this video, we're going to look at solving a multiple step equation. And this one's going to be a little challenging because it is going to have everybody's favorite fractions. All right, so let's get this written down here. Let's try negative 1 fourth times the quantity x minus 8 plus 1 half times the quantity x plus 2 equals x minus 9. Now I have a, another video on solving multiple step equations and in that video I go through these steps up here, the steps for solving a multiple step equation. Um, so we're going to follow those steps in this one as well. Um, and we're going to deal with these fractions as we go along and I'm going to show you something you can do to kind of help with the fractions. So our first thing we need to do is simplify the expression on each side of the equal sign. So here we have an equation. This is an equation because it contains an equal sign. And the equal sign is very important, right? It's acting as your balance. It's splitting the equation into two different expressions. So we have an expression on the right, uh, left hand side and an expression on the right hand side. And we want to simplify each of these expressions uh, individually. Okay, so I'm just going to focus on the left hand side and I'm going to simplify this expression. Combine like terms, do the distributive property, that kind of thing. On the right hand side, um, we're not going to have too much work to do to simplify this expression because I only have two terms and they're not like terms, so I can't combine them. The right hand side is going to be pretty easy. All right, so we'll start by distributing this one fourth and this one half and see what we get. All right, so one negative one fourth times x is negative one fourth x and negative one fourth times eight. Now I'm gonna also think of this as negative eight. I know this says minus eight, but remember subtraction is the same as adding a negative. So what I'm really thinking, I'm thinking of this as negative eight because if I change this to adding a negative eight, I'm gonna do negative one fourth times negative eight and you don't have to change this to plus a negative, but this is why um, you can think of this minus 8 as just a negative 8 when you're doing your multiplication. All right, so uh, negative times a negative is going to be a positive, so I need to put a plus here. And then 1 fourth times 8. Now remember, multiplying by 1 fourth is just the same as dividing by 4. All right, if you put a 1 under here, you'd end up taking 1 times 8, which is 8, and 4 times 1, which is 4. So you're going to have 8 over 4, which is just 8 divided by 4. Multiplying by a fourth is the same as dividing by 4. All right, 1 half times x is just 1 half x. And then we've got 1 half times 2, which is 1. Half of 2 is 1. And on the right-hand side, everything's going to stay the same. Okay, so we're still on step one because we haven't fully simplified the expression on the right-hand side of the equal sign. We have some like terms over here. Um, we have some x terms here and here and some constant terms here and here. So we have to do 1 half minus 1 fourth x. So in order to do that, we need a common denominator. And the common denominator is going to be 4, right? Okay, so let's take care of that. So we have negative 1 fourth x. Now I'm going to take this uh, 1 half term and move it to the front. You don't have to, but I'm just going to put them next to each other. Uh, so 1 half is the same as 2 fourths x. And I get that by multiplying the top and bottom of this fraction by 2 to get my common denominator. So that gives me 2 fourths. And I'll go ahead and add the 2 plus 1. That's 3. That's pretty straightforward, right? And that gives us x minus 9. So now we can combine our x terms together. We have negative 1 fourth plus 2 fourths. A question I often get asked is where does this negative apply to? Is it the top or the bottom or both? Um, generally, I'm just going to say the top. But in, in reality, the fraction, the full fraction, negative 1 fourth, fourth, that's equal to negative 1 over 4 or 1 over negative 4. You could apply that negative to the numerator or the denominator. But not both, because if you apply it to both the numerator and the denominator, you have a positive one-fourth, right? So this is not equal to negative one-fourth is not equal to negative one over negative four, because that would be a positive. So in this case, since my denominator is four, I'm going to apply it to the numerator. And um, let's get rid of 
of that. Then I can think of this as negative 1 plus 2, so that's 1. So now I have, uh, let's see, i got to choose my pen again. I have 1 fourth x, right, because 2 take away 1 is 1, plus 3 equals x minus 9. So all of that was step 1. Simplify the expression on each side of the equal sign. Okay, so step two, get the variable on one side of the equal sign. I've got, um, and, and sometimes you might just have the variable on one side of the equal sign, but in this case we've got an x term on the right-hand side here, and we've got an x term on the left-hand side over here. Now you can't combine these, right, because they're on opposite sides of the equal sign. You can't combine those together. You have to subtract or add one of the terms um, to both sides. So for example, I could say subtract 1 fourth x from this side and subtract 1 fourth x from this side. You could also subtract x from both sides if you want. So what that's going to do is it's going to eliminate the x term from the left-hand side. So now I've got 3 equals. All right, what does x take away 1 fourth x? Well, remember, x is 1x, so you're really doing 1 take away a fourth. 1 take away a fourth. Hopefully you can do that in your head, hopefully. That's 3 fourths. If you think of it like money, 1 take away a quarter, a dollar take away a quarter is 75 cents or 3 quarters. And minus 9. Okay, so now what we're left with, once we get the variables, uh, all the x's on the same side, we're left with a two-step equation. And we know how to solve that. So we're going to add 9 to both sides. And that gives us 12 equals... 3 fourths x, and then you could divide by 3 fourths, but I prefer to multiply by the reciprocal because if you're going to divide by 3 fourths, you're just going to end up multiplying by the reciprocal anyway. I'm going to leave this space over here because I'm going to show you something that you might like. Okay, so 3 fourths x, so we will multiply both sides by 4 thirds. Multiply 12 by 4 thirds. Think of that as 12 over 1 if you like. So now I just have x on the right-hand side, and over here you could either do, um, you know, 3 goes into 12 4 times, times 4 is 16, right? Or 12 divided by 3 is 4, times 4 is 16, or you could do 4 times 12 is 48, and then divide that by 3 and get 16. So that is our answer. Okay, so something I want to show you, uh, an alternate method, let's do this in blue from this step right here. And on this problem, you know, it wasn't so bad just to keep all the fractions and uh, deal with them, you know, a fourth and a half, no big deal really. But if the fractions were, maybe there was more fractions or maybe they were harder fractions to work with, there's a technique called clearing the fractions where you can get rid of all the fractions, which I know for some of you sounds lovely. Clearing fractions. Okay, so what you're going to do in this clearing fractions method, I don't like I left that big space there. Let me fix that. I'm going to move this x over a little bit. One half x. Okay, thanks for your patience there. You're going to look at the denominators of your fractions. So in this case, our equation, we've got two fractions and our denominators are two and four. And you are going to pick what would be your least common denominator if you decided to, um, you know, go ahead and add these in the traditional way. And our least common denominator was 4, right? That was our least common denominator, or is our least common denominator for this case. But instead of getting a least common denominator, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by that least common denominator. So instead of getting the common denominator, I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. All right, so let's see what happens. I'm going to take 4 times this, and you have to do the whole side. you got to do everything. So i got to take 4 times all this. Let's see what we get. All right, so 4 times 1 fourth. These 4s are going to cancel, and you're just going to have 1. You're going to have negative 1. So we'll have negative 1x, and then 4 times 2 is 8. All right, 4 times a half, what's half of 4? That's 2, so we have 2x plus, and 4 times 1 is 4. And then on the right-hand side, we have 4x minus 
36. Okay, so you might be thinking, well, why would I do that? What's so great about that? Well, what's so great about that is the fractions are gone. So from this point forward, you don't have to deal with any fractions. Notice over here when we were doing it this way in the black, we had fractions the entire way. Right? We had fractions to start with, we distributed, we had fractions, we combined like terms, we had fractions, we solved our two-step equations. Up to the very last step, we were dealing with fractions. Um, if you use this clearing the fractions technique, one step, no more fractions. Right? And then we let's just solve it to show that it does come out the same. So 2x take away 1x if we combine our like terms. We'll combine those and we'll combine those. So that gives us x, 1x, right? x plus 12 equals 4x minus 36. So now we need to get our x's on the same side. Let's We could subtract 4x or we could subtract x. But to keep things positive, I'll subtract x. It will work either way. So we get 12 equals 4x take away 1x leaves 3x's. Add 36. No fractions the whole way. 48. See, I don't mind fractions, but I know they can be a pain. It is a little easier to do stuff in your head without them. Divide by 3, and 3 goes into 48 16 times. So there it is. We could do the whole thing without fractions. So you still have to find the least common denominator, but instead of using it to combine your like terms, multiply every single term on both sides of the equal sign by that least common denominator, and your fractions will be no more.